Hi guys, in our fourth example about heated reactions calorimetry, we're going to go through a medium uh, level question that deals with uh, a reaction between two components in a coffee cup calorimeter. So in this reaction we have NaOH mixing with HNO3. Now from the, from the uh, given we saw that the T initial, that the temperature increased from T initial of 35 degree to a T final of 37 degrees Celsius. And we are given the volume and the concentration for both NaOH and HNO3. So the question is, what is the delta H reaction of this reaction? So how do we go uh, by doing this? The trick here is that usually when we have this, uh, when we have combustion, let's say we're using bomb calorimetry to do combustion, we have only one reactant that we're using. So we're mainly using, let's say, ethanol, benzene, those sorts of things. But now we actually have two components in this reaction. So how do we choose which one of those components um, in our reaction? How do we know whether to choose uh, HNO3 or NaOH? Remember, it's a solution, okay? In a solution, the main, uh, the main component of the solution is water. Those are simply ions in the water. So we have to use the specific heat for water. But the thing is, which, what do we use here in terms of mass? And this is what we need to figure out. So let's find, uh, let's find the uh, number of moles for NaOH and HNO3. We need to figure out which one is the limiting reactant and which one is in excess. That's the main thing you need to find out when you have reactions in calorimetry. So let's go ahead and do the number of moles. So for NaOH, number of moles of NaOH equals C times V equals 0 0.3 mole per liter times 0 0.1 liters. Remember that you need to switch up the units as well. So that would give you that would give you 0 0.03 moles. So let's see now for the uh, number of moles of HNO3. So number of moles of HNO3 equals concentration, again, 0 0.305 times 0 0.1 liter. This is mole per liter. Cancels off the liters. You're left with moles, so that would be 0 0.0305 moles. So now we found out the, the, the both values for moles. So now we know that NaOH is the limiting reactant in this reaction. So at this point now, we're not going to use this uh, in our next step, where we're going to use it in the final step when we're calculating a delta H reaction. So if we now use the law of conservation of energy, now, in law of conservation energy, you need to state which one is the system and which one is the surroundings, really. So, in this example over here, we can, we can uh, separate between the system and surroundings by considering the system, let's say, as the reaction itself, and by considering the surroundings as the actual solution. So, the solution where the components are present in. So, we could say that Q reaction plus Q solution is equal to zero. This means that Q reaction is equal to negative Q solution. Solution being the water uh, in the mixture here. So now let's find out the Q solution. So in order to find the Q reaction, so it's negative Q solution, so Q of solution is the mass of water, okay? Now, the mass of water, when it's not given to you, you, uh, you can consider the density of water to be one gram per milliliter. So I can go, I can add this over here for you guys. So when the density of water is not given to you, you usually consider it as density equals one gram per milliliter of water. So that's what you usually uh, considered. So now, 
you should add the volumes over here together. So you have 100 mils of NaOH and 100 mils of HNO3. You need to add this volume together, remember, because you're adding both mixtures together. So you're going to have a total of 200 milliliters. So now you could go ahead and switch up the mass. So you have 200 milliliters times 1 gram per milliliter. So that would give you 200 times. The next thing is the specific heat of water. Specific heat of water, which is something that you should, you should have memorized by now, is 4.18 joules per gram Celsius times the delta T. So we said that the T final is 37 degree and the T initial is 35 degree. So it's a two degree difference between them. So you could write it like this. So now we can go ahead and solve this question. So if you do the multiplication and you do the calculations, you should end up with negative 1,673.6 joules. So that's the answer uh, for Q reaction. Now, this is not what we're asked for. We're asked for delta H reaction. Delta H reaction is different than Q reaction. So remember, this Q is for the reaction that's occurring over, over here. But we need to change it delta H reaction, which is per mole of a substance. This is where the limiting reactant comes in hand. Remember that the reaction has sometimes has excess and sometimes ha sometimes has excess, sometimes have the reactants in the same quantity. In this reaction over here, we have HNO3 excess and limiting reacting NaOH. You always use the NaOH limiting reactant in your calculations. So in order to find the delta H reaction, the delta H reaction in this scenario would be dependent on the value or the quantity of NaOH present. So we already calculated the number of moles of NaOH, which is 0.03 moles. So this much is produced by this much moles. So we can go ahead and do the delta H reaction. So the delta H reaction is going to be equal to Q reaction over the number of moles. So number of moles of limiting. So that would give you negative 1,673.6 no, 1, joules over 0 0.03. That should give you negative 56,000 joules per mole. So that is the delta H reaction of this reaction. You could switch it up, of course, to kilojoules, which is much easier to read. Uh, kilojoules, sorry. Remember, remember, one kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules, so 56,000 joules would be equal to uh, 56 uh, kilojoules. So the answer, the final answer that we have over here for this delta H reaction is negative 56 kilojoules per mole. And you can go ahead and put this over here once you're done. So delta H reaction is equal to negative 56 kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole.